Whoa, hello. The struggles of an iPhone videographer. <gasps> All right, hello everybody. Today we're gonna to talk about how to land that very first gig in data science. As a current data scientist, I do remember the struggle of trying to convince employers to hire you for the first time without any work experience. It's not fun, it's not easy, but once you get the first job, it does get a lot easier. So that's what we're gonna do. All you need is one to get the next one. I've also had the chance to hire first-time data scientists as interns, so the content of this video is going to be a combination of what worked for me as well as what I've seen work really well for other people. Every tool, resource, website that I mention I will link in the description below so you can feel free to check those out later after the video. Okay, so let's get started. The way that I see it, there's three phases that every data scientist goes through as soon as they decide they want to pursue the career path. The first phase is knowledge and skill acquisition. This happens before you start applying to any jobs. It's basically the process of equipping yourself with the tools that you need to become a great data scientist. Every data scientist needs three categories of tools in their tool belt. The first is data science education. So this is theoretical knowledge. A fundamental part of solving the problems that data scientists work on is having a solid understanding of statistics concepts and machine learning algorithms. There are many ways to acquire this knowledge, which is why there's so much diversity in the backgrounds of data scientists. And that's one of the best parts of the field, at least one of my favorite parts. Everyone that you're working with in data science has taken a very different path to get to the same destination. So it's kind of cool. Very broadly speaking, there are two categories of data science education paths you could take. If you'd like to pursue a traditional education path, you can sign up for a degree program in a technical field. A large part of data science theory is deeply rooted in math and computing. So a lot of data scientists have academic backgrounds in things like math, computer science, physics, or engineering. However, because of the popularity of data science in recent years, a lot of academic institutions have also started offering programs specifically designed for the profession. These are programs that teach you how to apply advanced analytics in the workplace. You can now have degrees like a master's in management analytics or a master's in data science. So that's pretty cool too. The second data science path you could take is self-education. So this route entails taking advantage of all the amazing resources out there available to you courtesy of Professor Google, or as I like to call him, the only reason I survived my math degree. There are countless online courses out there that equip you with the skills you need to become a good data scientist. A lot of them are also free. In addition to online courses, you can also absorb content like blogs, YouTube videos, of course, this one. research papers, project documentation, and so much more. And all of these things will give you exposure to data science from a different perspective. So I encourage you to learn this way, even if you have formal data science education, it's just a great way to put another perspective on things. The second tool you need in your tool belt is great programming skills. Data scientists spend a large chunk of their time writing code, so it's something that every employer will be looking for right away uh, and something you want to make sure that you have. Python is the most versatile and commonly used scripting language used for data science, so it's a great place to start. And in addition to scripting languages, you should get some exposure to SQL or SQL as well, because data lives in databases. And as a data scientist, you will most likely be working with SQL at some point in your role. Finally, the very last thing we need in our nice little tool belt is hands-on data science experience. Once you have the knowledge and the coding skills, it's time to put them together and show the world what you're working with, you know, data science. <laughs> a great place to get started with this is kaggle.com which is free and it's a platform that allows you to browse through data sets use data sets solve pre-written out machine learning problems quite possibly the most valuable part of the platform is the fact that you can see examples of how other people have solved the same problems and all their code is there so yeah it's just a really great place to learn if you're super ambitious and you want to take it to the next level, 
Think about how you can use data science to solve a problem that you're really passionate about. One example that I've seen a lot, which is really cool, is I've seen people gather their own sports um, game history data from the web and then use it to build a machine learning model that predicts athlete slash team performance. So yeah, something like that. Get creative, get your hands dirty, and try to solve a problem and build something that really tests your theoretical and your coding skills. Once this is done, you're ready to move on to phase two. Prepping your job applications. So start with a resume, of course, and I actually have another video up tailored towards those who are looking for their first technical role. Um, so yeah, be sure to check that out. In a nutshell, there are two really important things that should be kept in mind when constructing a data scientist's resume. The first is focus on technical skills. The fundamental elements of a data scientist's job are technical. So if you don't do a good job at showcasing that you have these on your resume, then you probably won't make it to the interview stage. Your resume screener will be looking for what you know how to do, what skills do you have, how you know how to do it, where did you learn these skills, and how you've applied your skills. List your projects and your hands-on experience. So make these things really clear on your resume. The second super important data science resume component is communicating your soft skills effectively. For any skill that isn't technical, don't list it. Instead of listing it, tell a story that showcases how you've applied, acquired, slash demonstrated that skill. When you talk about your experiences, emphasize the soft skills or interpersonal skills that they've helped you develop. Okay, so in addition to your resume, every data scientist application should include a portfolio or examples of your work. For a data scientist, the easiest way to do this is to put your project code up on GitHub where a hiring manager can review the code and check out what you know how to do from a technical capacity. To make user-friendly data science projects, consider placing your code in a well-documented Jupyter notebook or in a simple web application using something like the Flask Python micro web framework. Those are really great ways to be able to deliver your code and make it usable so that it's not just like a bunch of Python scripts. Your portfolio can also include data visualizations, reports, dashboards, um, anything visual. You can consider making a portfolio website where you put all examples of your work together into one place and you can even host it for free using a platform like GitHub IO. Okay, so now that your skills are good to go and you have an awesome application, it's time to move on to phase three. And this phase, uh, for lack of a better term, I'll call it networking. <laughs> The purpose of this phase is to put yourself in a position where opportunities come to you. Don't rely solely on applying to publicly available job listings. Be proactive. Get in touch with people who may be on the lookout for a data science skill set now or in the future. And people that you can learn from. So current data scientists are a great place to start. Just try to talk to as many as you can and it's a great way to learn about the field, learn about what skills are currently in demand, learn about what companies are looking for right now. It's just, it's so valuable to do this, to get this insider scoop on what's happening in the field. You can also reach out to companies that you're interested in, even if they don't have job listings available, use tools like LinkedIn, for example, to find someone working at a company or a team that, you're, that you'd like to work on. Tell them why you'd like to work at their company, show them your passion, and tell them how you could help them out. And maybe, you know, one day when they have a position available, they'll think of you. And if not, it's just a great way to practice putting yourself out there and making valuable connections with people. In most cases, it's easier to get in touch with the right person at a company if the company is a little bit smaller. I'd like to recommend a website that personally landed me my first data science role. It's called AngelList and it's a platform where startups aim to connect with talent and investors. So they, there's job listings up on AngelList, but you can also browse through companies that you might be interested in and reach out directly to the company leadership. Talk about what you know how to do, how you can be an asset to their team, shoot your shot, see what happens. 
Finally, another social hustling method that has personally been really effective for me is attending events where you can meet people who work in the fields. Conferences, talks, meetups. The smaller the event is, the easier it'll be to strike up a conversation with someone who is a data scientist or someone who knows someone who could be looking to hire a data scientist. I've actually personally gotten interviews by doing this, so I can confidently say that going to events and talking to people at them works. Fortune favors the bold, be bold. Meetup.com is a great place to find these events. Side note, of course, due to COVID-19, networking and attending events isn't the same now as it usually is. There are still tons of virtual events taking place, so be sure to check those out. Okay, so before I let you go, I do have a bonus tip that I don't really know where to put, so I'm just gonna leave it right here at the end. And that tip is to consider doing an internship or a returnship. <laughs> Internships slash returnships are a really great way to rapidly learn and acquire that practical hands-on experience uh, without having too much experience beforehand. Lots of companies out there are very accepting of people who are not currently students to work as interns. Um, so yeah, check them out. Shopify is one of them off the top of my head that I know, but there are tons out there. So that is that. Thank you so much for tuning in. Please leave a comment if there's anything else that you'd like to see. Uh, check out the links in the description below and good luck on your job hunt. Bye.